Hello and welcome back to the channel. I want to do a kind of update video. Um, it's not really a tutorial, but I uh, might get something out of it when I go through the XML and how I've kind of adjusted things. Um, had some issues with particle systems and other things that I couldn't quite get my head around how to make parts visible or invisible and how to make them rotate and be visible and other other things that were just causing me some problems and uh, took me a couple of days to get my head around how all of those parts all joined together and work. So um, I didn't want to then have to undo all of that to show you it in the video. So what I want to do here is just go through the changes that I've done in the XML and the I3D um, and other places and the reasons behind them. So <clears throat> Basically, uh, if we look in the XML for the unit itself, in the last video, I went into game at the end and tried to purchase it and it wasn't then visible. And that was because I had the category set incorrectly. As somebody pointed out in the comments, it more than likely would have been in the miscellaneous settings. Uh, but uh, I didn't particularly want to keep it there. It's not the right place for it. Um, it shouldn't be in a vehicle miscellaneous category. It should be under the buildings placeables category so um, <clears throat> looking through the uh, template xml's i found that the actual category should be global company placeable because it creates a entirely new shop category so this needs to be set up for that to work uh, and put it in the right place and i like it to be in the right place so um, just change that there i've also changed the brand from ls farming or whatever it was to the global company placeable um, and then also going through here, I've changed a couple of other things because um, I don't have a map at the moment with wash potato or chat or, or compost. What I've done is I've changed the outputs to work with in-game uh, fill types. So it's going to be potatoes in and potatoes out, but then it will give me chaff instead of compost. So it'll be potato instead of wash potato and then chaff instead of compost. Uh, for me, I think this is quite a good way of testing things because what I don't want to do is set a map up and then get all this together and it not work and it end up being the map that's at fault um, and me pulling my hair out trying to figure out why the mod isn't working when everything is set up correctly and it's not that that's causing the problem. So I think when you're kind of setting something like this up and you're testing it, it's important to use something that's already in the game as standard uh, so that uh, you know that the mod you've put together works and then you can start to change fill types and things like that later on um, to, you know, additional fill types outside of the uh, standard fill types in game. Um, <clears throat> because otherwise you can just go run around in circles trying to figure out why something's not working and it not be the mod itself. it be the actual way that something else external has been set up. So that was important for me to kind of go through that. Um, and then I've also set some other parts up here because in the previous videos I talked about shaders and I set up the different shaders because I'm using the mesh ro rotate shader to make everything turn and rotate and do whatever. Um, this was okay for certain parts, but other parts I found then because of the values that I'm setting of on and off, what was happening is the entire drum was going to be invisible until the unit actually switched on, then it would become visible but then the other problem i had all of the parts that were set up in the shaders when they became visible they were static they weren't rotating so what i've actually done here is i've split some parts up and i've got the actual potato plane in and out which is the actual um part in the uh and i didn't want to do that i wanted to do this uh which is the part inside the drum itself if we open this up this part here inside the drum just for kind of a filler really a visual filler uh, <clears throat> these parts here um, I want them to rotate but I, I want them to be invisible until they are required so once the unit starts then I want them to become visible and then I want them to also rotate so um, unlike the drum which needs to be visible all the time so what I've kind of done is separated them up a little bit so I've taken the actual Trammell, Trom, Trammell, I have used part of that drum from the shader section and put it into an animation node. So it rotates on the 
uh, x axes, which is what the 1 is for. It's 1, 2, 3. So 1 is x, 2 is y, and 3 is z. So we've got rotate on the 1 axis or x axis at set speed. Um, and then it will just be visible all the time. And then when the unit kicks in, it will then start to rotate. But by doing that setup, I then had to remove the shader because you can't have the shader on there um, as well. Because again, it's always going to rotate it's no longer going to be controlled through the XML because it won't have the correct parameters set in the XML to control the shader. So what will happen then is it will always rotate um, because the shader will be making it rotate all the time. And then you'll have a cross conflict because when you then put the product in, the <coughs> animation part of it, the animation nodes will want to also rotate it. And if one's trying to go one way and one's trying to go the other way, it will cause some massive issues. So by splitting everything up, um, <clears throat> and removing the shader part and then um, having it rotate on its own setup I think was a better way of doing it and then uh, also for the actual rollers here uh, these were both named rolls and because everything is i3d mapped um, you can't really have two things called the same thing because it's going to be looking at the name uh, that you set up in the node here and then identify that against the actual i3d mapping so to have two of the similar name or same name trying to be positioned or controlled in two separate index paths or nodes would again just complicate things because if one's rotating clockwise and one's rotating anti-clockwise it will get really complicated with how that's going to be put together because they'll both be trying to do the same thing uh, they'll both be trying to rotate clockwise and anti-clockwise. Hopefully that makes sense. But uh, um, <clears throat> most important thing is to just make sure that whatever node si system or structure you set up to name everything individually, if they are separated by their different object or mesh. Um, and again, one thing that I did actually uh, forget to do on quite a lot of these, which I still need to do, is remove any old user attributes because they're no longer required, they're not uh, required in um, in 19 uh, as far as placeables go because everything is controlled by the scripting and the XML. Um, so the other thing then is the sounds. Uh, I actually added some sounds in here but uh, there were some sounds set up for templates using the Roper I think it was. But I, I wanted to use the original sounds because they are um, designed or set up already in the scene graph here um, so it just seems stupid not to use them so I thought right I'm just going to basically do that so I've set them up under GE sound nodes which is what we've got here because these sounds are actually in Giants editor here and then I've named them appropriately from the scene graph and set that up and then joined everything together down here for their ID and their actual um, mapping their i3d mapping through the nodes so all of that's been set up i think all the other stuff here that i i'd already done just a couple changes that i made here and there to make things work a little bit better um i think that's pretty much that on that side of things <clears throat> yeah so uh and then our name here i'm actually going to change this because this is what's in the store um, whoops, and uh, I don't want it to be that, I want it to be that. I'm not too worried about the um, translations for other languages at the moment, uh, that will come later on, but I want it to be called Potato Washer as, you know, <clears throat> as that, not uh, um, a joined up word, which doesn't make any sense really. So... <clears throat> That's that. Uh, the other thing I want to do is also look at the placement um, sizes here. And that should be okay. So we're going to, there is, there is quite a lot that still needs to be done. The particle systems also need to be set up, but that needs to be done in a video all of its own because that's quite, quite intense, that part. There's a lot involved in that. And I had quite a lot of issues with them. Um, the uh, particles not doing what they're meant to do so that's probably going to be in a video of its own i may stay 
may start it in this video and then continue it on but there's quite a lot involved that might even go across two videos I don't know yet um, but what I want to do though is if I go ahead and save that what I want to do is uh, actually get this into game and see what parts work and what parts don't work and then and whether they rotate in the right directions uh, at the right speeds and various other different things and then um, kind of go forward from there I guess so I think everything else is set up okay there oh the other thing I wanted to show is um, let's uh, just oh that's the other thing I want to do as well we need to create a new camera because we've got our GUI camera which is the camera that we look at in game through the menu this needs to be set up in a specific manner so it would probably be I would probably set it up maybe something like that um, or even possibly better maybe something like that so I would be able to see the heap here and the heap of compost um, maybe even you know something like that so you can see it all this will be really important so you can see how much input there is how much compost has come out and then how many washed potatoes you've got or whatever else or you may just want to have it real close in like this so you can see all the parts working and whatever else this will be a personal preference thing however you want to uh, set that up um, we'll leave it there for now but that's kind of really important but then because we've got our camera here our perspective camera which is set default in um, the giant center that I'm going to replace so what I'm going to do is uh, if we go to view you can see at the moment I've, I'm set on the GUI camera so every time I move the camera around in here I'm resetting the position so if I then save it and it's like pointing over here when I go into the game and and try and look through the GUI camera in game I'm going to be looking at you know a field across the way and not what I'm actually meant to be looking at which is the potato washer so if I set that somewhere up like that and then what I'm going to do is create a new camera so we'll create a new camera here and I'm going to take that one and then I'm going to cut and paste it into there and then I'm going to move it up and the reason why I'm moving it up one is because when you start Giant Zeta it will look for the first camera in the scene graph and that will be the default camera in the list in here um, so <clears throat> what I'm going to do is change this one and I'm going to call it work so this would be the work camera uh, it will mean that I'm going to need to update the XML because now this one is lower it means that it's now set to node 8 and not 7 uh, which it was before so um, important key fact if you any edits and changes you make in your scene graph will affect your node structure so just make sure that whatever you change there is not going to um, completely balk up the actual node structure because you may have to then go through the entire system again the entire scene graph and update your XML with any changes that you may have made so now what I can do is go into view and switch to work camera which you can see is now default at the top of the list and then I can delete this camera down here because I no longer require it um, <clears throat> and now I can happily move this one around wherever I want it to be and when I then switch over to the other camera it's always going to be in this position it's never going to move unless I move it and that will be then set up for whatever I want to do you know viewing it in game so we have our work camera to actually make any changes in the Giants editor but the GUI camera stays exactly where it is uh, so I can always look at that in game and uh, not worry about having to reset it every time I come into the Giants editor because I'm going to be making lots of changes here I'm going to be you know popping in and out and saving and making a few changes saving again I don't want to have to worry about having to reposition the GUI camera every time I make a small change so by adding in that extra work camera it allows me to do that without making any edits to this one hopefully again as always this all makes sense it's quite a lot to take in um, but uh, okay so we've got that one all set up let's save that um, so let's see what we've got then uh, Oh, the other thing, um, the mod desk, I've made a couple of changes here. Um, 
I change that let's do that so we've got our title and description there's lots of information or there was lots of information here which I've removed because it was no longer required it was all to do with fabric script and end company so no longer needed so I've removed all of that the actual potato washer description links back into the XML here uh, we have our function uh, and because this is not a standard um, function as far as giants go then it requires its own custom one so we put the information in here and then link that into the mod desk in the L10N section with our actual description which will show up in the store page and then we're in the previous video I added in the extra source files here with the global company checker lure so I've added also then the actual minimum version so if there's any version lower than this it will give me a warning I should never come across that problem because as far as I'm aware the only public version is 1.0.0 um, but um, you know you never know so I wanted to put that in there as well and then our brands I've also changed the brand here uh, which links into again the actual unit XML so this and this all links in together with the appropriate parts there so that's all set up fantastic um, so I think what I'm going to do then while I've got this open is I'm going to actually have a look and just see <clears throat> so if I close those down for now um, okay so that's fine that's not going to give me what I want but that's okay what we'll do then is uh, I want to actually get the size of this setup here for the actual placement um, now you may want to actually remove this up to you entirely uh, because I've got the um, <clears throat> this particular way is set up to terrain the fort terra to terraform the terrain and then paint paint down asphalt um, in the areas here you might not particularly want this massive massive great base plate in here so if that doesn't really do it for you just you know remove it it's not really required as such um, the only thing I would say is when you actually by deleting that um, <clears throat> and getting rid of it if the terraforming doesn't quite work the way it's meant to which uh, quite often it doesn't in my experience and it gives you some bumps and bumps in some nasty places then the Bowden plate or the actual base plate might kind of fill in all the gaps for you but on the other hand it also may cause you issues and you won't then be able to drive up over it to get to the unit so it'll be a bit of experimentation as to whether you want to keep it or not entirely up to you uh, try it both ways and just see which is a pref preference for you and your map and game style and whatever else uh, I think I'm going to actually remove it because I don't particularly want it there and then what we've got here is our areas nodes so in this particular area here um, I'm going to it's going to terraform the terrain and then paint down asphalt and you want to make this big enough that so that um, if it terraforms the terrain in a certain fashion that uh, your outputs stay within that particular level area that is created otherwise it could also cause you some problems so you might want to perhaps maybe um, create a primitive plane this is the way I normally do it I create a primitive plane and then I scale it right up to the kind of area that I want to have everything filled in so perhaps maybe something like that um, <clears throat> would do something like that and then our potato heap will be formed here so maybe not quite as big as that maybe come back just a little bit something like that perhaps yeah that probably would work okay maybe come a little bit there we go something like that um, and then we can round up our numbers so we'll have 32 and we'll just go 20 on that one something like that and then these values here I can use those in the XML so our scale X is 32 so I can then put in here uh, I always tend to go too higher on the test size so we'll put 34 on there and then we've got uh, 20 on the Z axis so in here I'm going to go 22 and then this one would be 32 and this one would be 20 
and that will then give me enough space around everywhere so that it's not going to place it too close to other objects. Um, again, that's something you'll have to play around with the numbers and just see what's going to work for you. Um, and then what we'll also do here, so if I go and save that one, I can then set up my clear areas to work with that. So I might want to perhaps maybe kind of make this a bit bigger so it gives me a good enough size and a good enough area to work with. So I can bring this one out to here. <clears throat> Something like that, perhaps. Something like that. And then I can move all of these appropriately. So if I move that one over to there, let's set that to zero. And then this one here, let's set that to zero. And go out to somewhere like that. This will now be my clear area, which will also then get painted down with asphalt. Um, because I've also got this set up for my terraforming, it will then use those same nodes to terraform the terrain and create all the area for the asphalt and everything. That's the idea anyway. So, <clears throat> and then we can delete the plane again because it's no longer required. So this is a kind of setup we will, we will hopefully end up with. So I'm going to delete the light. Uh, just so I can get it into game and it doesn't cause me any issues. Um, and I think we've pretty much got that sorted out. So um, again, as I said before, just make sure that uh, you go through here and check for any user attributes that still may be applied in places that you don't want them to be, because this will cause you problems later on. I'm pretty sure I've got rid of the majority of them, if not all of them. Um, don't need that one sounds we don't need that one so there shouldn't be any left there's one now look a little sneak so just make sure go through and remove any of those because you don't need them anymore um, yeah, I think we should be good there that's okay that's not going to have any anyway so now if I actually switch over to the GUI camera you'll see it will go to where the position I set it up originally, and that will always be the same um, for that. So I want to double check on this. So let's go material editing and on this one, no custom shader. That one's got a shader. That one and that one has not. That's fine. So that's OK. And then we can close that down. Um, OK, so we should be kind of like, you know, closer than we were before. Uh, hopefully I've explained why I've changed certain parts um, to get things working and whatever else. Um, and I, like I say, uh, just updating XMLs to uh, place things in the correct categories and whatever else. So what I'm going to do then is if I open up the mods folder here, <clears throat> we'll put that into there like so. And then we'll just pop into game and uh, purchase the unit. And hopefully what we should end up with is um, the potato washer being purchasable, which is really important. And then also uh, other parts work. Now, the only thing I'm not 100% sure of is how the actual potato washer is going to be placed. It may be too high, it may be too low. Uh, so it might be floating in the air, or it might be in the ground. It all depends. Um, because I've removed that Bowden plate, that base plate, which can hide quite a lot of different things, uh, it might now cause me some problems and kick me in the butt. We'll see. Okay, so I'm going to go into the store here global company so we have our store category that's fantastic we're going here so we've got our potato washer the description we will have some icons extra icons for the potato wash potato and uh, compost eventually when I get all that set up so we're going ahead and buy this and I'm just going to put that down there like so and we'll have a look see what it looks like actually that's not too bad at all that looks pretty bloody good uh, we've got um, 
it's all level with the ground. We've now got our grass forage has been removed. Uh, we've got all the decals showing up where they're meant to be, I think. Yep, we've got our oil stains and our um, manhole cover and everything else there. Fantastic. So all of that is set up okay. We've got our um, drum, which is visible, but the actual drum uh, potato planes are invisible. So that's all good. And then what I'm going to do here, we'll go over. Uh, first of all, what I'll do is if I go into Control G and open up the global company menu here, this will give you any potential area errors uh, with XMLs that haven't loaded in correctly. This is more for things like um, your translation XMLs, it will give you lots of errors in here for things. Uh, but I have seen other error, errors to do with shaders and whatever else I think in there as well at times. Um, but mostly it's to do with uh, whether it's going to load in a translation XML and if there are any errors or anything like that in there. Um, and then <clears throat> we have a look at this one. So if we go into here. This will have the correct information in. And then this will have the description in when I get to that part to do with the uh, translation XMLs of our image. And then here we can select our camera. And as you can see there, it's looking exactly where I set it up for the GUI camera in the Giant Serta. So that's not a bad position. You'd be able to see everything working there. You fill planes, um, compost output, and potentially if the, the wash potato heap was big enough, you'd see that there as well. I think from this angle, I would prefer to, you know, this is a good angle. You can see all the parts working and doing what they're meant to do and everything else. So that's quite good, quite a good setup for the camera, I think. So we'll go back to the overview and then you can come into here, add in all your parts or whatever else, and then shows your outputs and whatever. So that's doing it through the global company menu anywhere on the map through the control G function, which it does show you in the F1 menu there. And if we come over to the unit, to the actual screen, the monitor here, you can see we get our automatic pop-up. This is all going to be changed as well. I'm going to have the little screen come on. I'm also going to set it up where the orange lamp is on when the unit is off and the green light comes on as long as, as well as the screen to show that it's all running and good to go and uh, all functions are green sort of thing. So <clears throat> here we can press R and similar menu again. And if you go to overview again, you can select the camera but I don't see the point in that as you're standing right next to the unit. So uh, whatever. Um, and then <clears throat> here what we'll do is we'll just add in a couple thousand litres of each of the uh, units, the, the inputs. So in this case we've got the potatoes, water and then the diesel. So we'll just add in a couple there, like so. The unit kicks in. We've got our potato planes there are now visible and spinning as well as the actual um, drum itself. That belt is rotating but in the wrong direction so we need to fix that. This one this one is rotating in the right direction but that one is not so we need to fix that one as well. Obviously all of this will have particle effects on it eventually. Um, let's have a look. We'll jump up here so yeah. Uh, <coughs> conveyor belt there is rotating and in the right direction so that's great I think that might be going a bit too fast we'll end up with mashed potatoes not washed potatoes so that needs to be slowed down it may even be rotating in the wrong direction I'm not sure but that's something else I can look at so we'll do that in the next video more than likely um, so yeah there's quite a bit there that still needs to be fixed and added in we've got our dynamic heap is working for the chaff which will end up eventually being compost and again our dynamic heap here is working for potatoes which again will be eventually washed potatoes when I get all that part of it set up as well but otherwise I think there we've got a nice space around it that you could get in here and work with your vehicles and all your bits and pieces and whatever else you could quite happily get in here with a wheel, lever, wheel loader or shovel loader or set up some sort of conveyor belt for both your outputs so I think that's not too bad. It's quite a lot of, you know, a good good amount of space around the unit has been cleared out and leveled and whatever else to work with. So that's not too bad at all. I'm quite pleased with how that's come out considering um, I've removed that base plate out of the way. It's now made it quite a nice, 
unit to actually have on the map so I think what we'll do then is we'll end this one here this was a bit more of a sort of talky talky video uh, than actually doing anything else a couple of things I explained in the XML and how to set them up and how uh, or what what changes that I made um, to actually get things working the way I wanted them to work because uh, as I said before certain things were actually either invisible or invisible uh, sorry they were either invisible or visible but not rotating or rotating in the wrong directions or whatever um, so several changes were required to, to make everything kind of join together and have them invisible um, or when I when the unit was off um, or visible and rotating when the unit was on so a little bit of backwards and forwards um, like I said it took me a couple of days to get my head around it but uh, eventually I got there and joined all the parts together so hopefully what I've got together so far has given you some information to go on um, and it's just basically using the uh, what I'm going to call template XMLs from already released global company mods um, and then kind of just you know going through the XMLs and looking at the actual units in Giants Editor and comparing the different parameters and whatever else to see what is um, how, how it's been set up by the guys that made the scripting um, and then you know kind of just working backwards from that so as you can see there the units now stopped it's run out of product the planes have disappeared they've gone invisible again and the, the actual drum has stopped spinning so fantastic all of that in my opinion so far at least is set up the way I want it to be set up um, so it's just a case of really now continuing on forward with uh, the next parts getting the belts rotating in the right directions um, by changing a couple of parameters there also want to get the fill planes working properly because at the moment we don't have the potato the water or the fuel level planes working correctly so those, those need to be set up as well uh, for some reason because it's not found in the indexes if I bring up the console it says index not found so those need to be sorted out as well um, not quite sure what's going on there but uh, we'll get to that when we get to it so yeah um, hopefully you'll join me in the next part when we'll continue on with actually uh, modifying a few parts in the XMLs to make things go in the right directions and the right speeds and then moving on to particle systems and uh, getting all that set up. I'm Shah Wizard, thanks very much for watching, I'll catch you on the next one.